Hey, what's going on? I'm Barry. And I'm Brent, and we are in the band Shine Down, and you are watching Berlin Music TV. Once again, warm welcome. Uh, we're still live at the Rock am Ring Festival backstage, and today we've got the pleasure to sit here with Brandon Barry from Shinedown. Hey, fellas, how's it going? It's good. Good to be here. Shall I say good morning or good afternoon? You can say good morning. Yeah. We're still waking up. Your set list is going to be like 40 minutes today, mm. which is, of course, a little bit shorter than the natural show. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, for... For us over here, I mean, we take into consideration the fact that, um, you know, in the States it's different for us. Um, but, you know, we're, we're beginning our career here and we take it very seriously. Um, we're very honored to be here. Uh, this is now our third time playing this festival. Um, so, yeah, the way we look at it is, is it's 40 minutes, so we need to give the audience every single ounce of who we are in that 40 minutes and give them the songs that we feel like they want to hear um, and leave an impression. Uh, how long do you guys normally play? Uh, back home we'll play for an hour and a half to up to two hours depending on the, the set times and curfews and things like that. But a headlining right. set's about an hour and a half. Okay. All right, so um, I guess the festival is not going to turn out to be less stressful than a regular touring routine? No, I, I, they all have their different stresses. Um, it, it's hard to turn your clock around and get you know get used to playing at noon or three o'clock in the afternoon as opposed to you know the nine o'clock and a very set schedule when you have a headlining run and you, you mm -hmm. know every day is going to be the same. Festivals are very different and every day is going to be a little bit different. You got to find your bearings and figure out where dressing rooms are and all that when you wake up in the morning. But it's worth it. I mean, really, it's it's not that bad. Currently, uh, we got the situation that you're playing the Twin Festival. But uh, anyhow, do you guys get a chance to like just get a sneak or spend at least some time to check out the festival, or is it just like more just on and off? Well, last night we were able to see Metallica on the side of the stage. We happened to know their head of security. So, I mean, as far as checking the festival out and, and what have you today, like we just got here. Well, we've been here, but we just got up. So today we'll have a little bit more time to walk around and, and see things. Um, one thing I felt or uh, I thought was really intriguing about this this particular festival is the fact that they have 30 brands of shirts for the actual festival, like the merchandise and everything. There's mm -hmm. 30 different shirts, which I think is incredible because I have a four-year-old little boy, so um, most of the time I never get a chance to get him things from different countries. So today I definitely wanted to try to make sure that they had something for him so I could bring it back to him. All right, cool. Can you pick out a favorite festival? That's tip. I mean, this is one of our favorites to play for sure. Um, this is fun, and downloads another fun one that we do. Um, really, as long as the fans are there and they're having a good time, and it's a nice day like it is today, that's that's what matters to us. That you can't really put a favorite on it because each one's just as fun as the last. It's just fun to do these festivals, really. We just finished festivals in the U.S. too. That um, on this last run that we were doing, um, one of the last festivals that we did before we came here was. Uh, called Rockfest and it's in a place called Kansas City in the US and we headlined it for the very first time this year so it was about 60,000 people so uh, it's a different you know um, coming coming over here and playing earlier in the day and what have you but the way we look at festivals are is it's it's a beautiful thing to be able to have all the camaraderie with all the bands especially coming here as opposed to there um, in the US um, it's a lot more eclectic here so there's a lot more different variations of uh, performers and artists and and what have you so uh, uh, you know, for us, it's a uh, it's a huge um, you know uh, opportunity for us. But uh, at the end of the day, we just love it where it's sold out, where the audiences are big and massive, and you know you can really get as much exposure as you can because we have something to say, and you know we're in this band for a reason, and we write songs for a reason, and you know the way that we look at it is is we're quite fearless when it comes to our style of music and what we do, and the end of the day we only have one boss and it's everybody in the audience so they're the ones that are important because they're the reason we're on the stage alright so why don't we put a little focus on the latest album Amarillis uh, Brent you once said I never want anyone to know what we're going to do musically what's basically the the musical deal treatment innovation of the latest album well the, the point that I'm making there is that you know you don't want to copy the last record that you recorded um, 
I think that musically Amaryllis um, is definitely as a band and musically uh, this particular album is a lot more advanced than any of the other three. Um, you know, Leave a Whisper doesn't sound like Us and Them, Us and Them doesn't sound like The Sound of Madness, and Amaryllis doesn't sound like the other three. Um, I think that we've had a steady progression, um, not only as songwriters, but, you know, the fact that we'll look at one another, especially me and Barry, because we've been together for 10 years now, um, uh, that we'll really take the initiative to push one another um, as far as music is concerned and the musicality of everything. Um, but like this record particular, uh, the particulars of this album was um, we're known for using strings on our record, meaning symphony and, and what have you, but on this album we used horns for the first time on one particular song. Um, there was just nothing that we wouldn't, um, we wouldn't try, um, and we were trying to push the envelope um, as far as stylistically making sure that each song um, wasn't like the other one, but that they were cohesive together, because Amaryllis is an album. It's not meant to be listened to like you put it on and you skip to track four and then you go to track eight or what have you. It's meant to be listened to in its entirety. Um, it kind of became a concept record without being conceptual. Um, but that's really, you know, what I mean by that. I, I don't want people to really be able to put their thumb on us either as far as thinking that, oh, they'll probably do a record like this or this will probably sound like their last record. Um, that's boring. It's, it, there's no fun in that. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're not really into copying ourselves. We're always trying to be original and be, we consider ourselves to be visionaries. So um, we take that very seriously when it comes to the songwriting and when it comes to making different albums, you know, when it's time to go to that next step. You know, while listening to that album, I personally was uh, surprised when basically Amaryllis included more ballads than, mm -hmm. for instance, Us and Them or The Sound of Madness. Mm -hmm. Is there a specific band member uh, responsible for the more slower or ballad sort of songs, or is it all to blame on the uh, democratic songwriting process? It's Barry. Barry will come up to me and he'll be like, man, I'm tired. I don't wanna, I'm tired. <laughs> I don't want to play fast anymore right now. Let's, let's do something else. <laughs> I need a break in the set. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, but I don't know. What, it, what, it, what do you feel about that? I don't think it's never intentional. It's whatever fits the record and how the songs flow together when we're putting the record together. I mean, going into Amaryllis, we had we wrote 33, 34 songs. Out of those, you have to whittle it down, and, and in whittling it down, these are the best songs of the bunch. Um, and for us, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's about what the song's conveying. If it's slow, it's slow. If it's fast, it's fast. As long as the song itself is a, is a good song, um, that's what we enjoy. And I think people enjoy that in our records. At least I hope they do. And the, and the fans seem to tell us that, that they go, you know, it doesn't matter. We just love the songs and the, the meanings behind the songs. And when you see us live, you see the amount of fun that we have and the passion we have for what we do. Um, we're not up there faking it. It's 100% it's honest, and it's honest on the record. And you know, if the tempo's a little slow, whatever, I actually enjoy playing slower. I think that really, and truthfully, this record, we, we wanted to really focus on um, the subject matter and not putting, not that we ever put walls up in the past, but we really wanted to open ourselves up on this record and really let people into our world. And, you know, we only know, we can only write about the situations that we've been in in life, and we can only talk about what we've been through. Because that's we're very honest when it comes to the songwriting. We never ever, we never approach a record and say we're going to write a song about A, B, C, or D, you know whatever the subject is because we want to be famous or because we think that it'll make money. Um, we couldn't do that because there's no honesty in it, and the audience will see if you're faking it. You know they, uh, the audience is not stupid. They they know exactly if you're being genuine and who you are. So we write what we know. Um, and I would say that this is definitely a record that's that's very autobiographical and, and, and very straightforward about you know who we are as individuals and, and, and what we've been through in the last 10 years of being in this band. At what time of the producing process have you guys been when you announced the album in March 2011? At that point in 2011 we had already written quite a bit of the record. We started right in January. Mm -hmm. Uh, writing the record, so. I mean, we were mastering the record. We started off touring in January of this year, and we started in Europe and in the UK. Um, we were actually, the very last day, when the record was finished, was actually Valentine's Day of this year, because we mastered the album five times. 
um, before it was before it was right. So we were actually working on the record, you know, all through up to February of this year before it actually was released. That at least sounds like uh, the studio part of the whole producing process still plays the major role, mm -hmm. which doesn't sound the same with uh, other bands. Yeah. Would you agree with that, or would you say that the marketing, the promotion, uh, takes a uh, way bigger toll nowadays? I think there's a little bit of both. We're really kind of um, perfectionists when it comes to making the record, so a lot of it is on our shoulders. We won't, we don't want to put anything out there that we wouldn't be 100% proud of. Um, we couldn't live with ourselves if there's a mistake on that. We had that with uh, with the Us and Them record. We weren't 100% in love with that record when it was done. And I think we still have regrets to this day for letting some of that stuff out because it wasn't how it should have been. It wasn't the representation of ourselves. We can have regrets because I don't know if we would be here now without that kind of, sure. you know, kind of... It's not animosity to that album, but that album was a turning point, I think, for, for us personally, where we got rushed through that album, and we will. that's why we will never, ever do that ever again. We'll never let anyone tell us to hurry up. When it's done, we'll tell you when it's done. Yeah, that's it. There's no regrets in our life. I, I'm, by regrets, I mean that we're just not happy with that record. We weren't 100% happy. So, um, yeah, we, we have to do it ourselves. All right, thank you guys for sparing some time with us. We appreciate it. Thank you.